What's good guys, this is your host O34, back at it again with another GOT unique pick showcase. Just like last time, we're gonna go over a Pokemon that was picked only once out of all 128 teams in the GOT. So let's get right into it, in the second episode we'll be covering Mega Ampharos, which was picked by Ojama of the Amsterdam Aerodactyls. Mega Ampharos is the Electric Dragon Mega Pokemon. It's currently unreleased and it's only available in the draft league format, but in Gen 6 it used to be part of the UU tier. Looking at the stats, the most obvious thing is the 165 special attack. It's got some decent bulk with 90 HP, 105 defense, and 110 special defense. It's extremely slow with only 45, so the mod is really suitable to being either a slow pivot, or a very strong wall breaker, or just a defensive bulky attacker. The electric stab is super powerful and it has a lot of good moves with great neutral coverage. Dragon is also resisted by very few typings and gives Mega Ampharos a nice set of resistances. So you can come in on hits and pivot back out to gain momentum, or you can start using a setup move, or you can just attack with Dragon Pulse or Thunderbolt. And the ability Mold Breaker actually doesn't really do that much for it, other than that it allows uh, Mega Ampharos to hit mods that have the Lightning Rod or the Volt Absorb ability. It doesn't get a lot of unique coverage, and most importantly, it doesn't get anything that hits ground types or fairy types for super effective damage, which are immune to the stat moves. It can hit steel types for super effective damage by using Focus Blast, but obviously that's prone to missing. It does get a few nice coverage moves such as Signal Beam and Power Gem, and of course it gets hidden power in any typing it wants. The value of Mega Ampharos becomes a little more clear when you look at the support and the setup options. Full Switch is super obvious as it can make Unfurrows into a slow pivot and it can let you bring in your squishy mods really easily. It gets a few nice status moves like Thunder Wave and Confuse Ray, and there's also a bunch of other supportive options like Light Screen, Reflect, Heal Bell, and even moves like Eerie Impulse and Cotton Spore, which lower the opponent's special attack and speed. It also gets a lot of unique setup options like Agility and Cotton Guard. It also gets Charge Beam and Magnet Rise to get rid of the ground uh, weakness. Although these moves are a little situational. You could combine some of these moves with Rest and Sleep Talk to have a recovering bulky monster that's kind of similar to Crocoon almost. I can imagine a Rest, Sleep Talk, Cotton Guard, Discharge set almost. Um, you can also just go fully defensive set like in Gen 6 U with Rest, Sleep Talk and just two attacks. And all in all, this is just a very versatile mod and it's much more supportive than it actually lets on. Alright, it's time for our interview. So today I've got with me Ojama from the Amsterdam Aerodactyls. Ojama, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine. You? Yeah, I'm pretty good as well. Let's uh, get into these questions. So question one is, um, Mega Ampharos, why did you pick that mod? Um, well, Mega Ampharos was never... At first I wanted Zapdos and Garchomp, mm -hmm. and those both got picked. Okay. And, I, like, and I kind of delayed getting like electric, an electric type and a dragon type until like the last pick, and I was like, fuck. They didn't have a Mega either, so you just picked up Mega Ampharos. <laughs> that makes sense, I guess. <laughs> Alright, yeah. question two, so... What are your expectations of this mod? Uh, well, it has like an it has like a 165. So my hope was pretty much for it to blow things up, and its, it's HP sounds pretty decent. So, like maybe take a hit, blow something up, or like some slow, full, some slow uh, full switches, so I can get some momentum. Uh, oh. Yeah, but my team is pretty slow, so running agility on Mega Ampharos it will probably still mean it gets outsped by most things my opponent's team. Okay, so uh, you just you just figured that it's all my team is already slow, so I yeah, might as well just not buy. And I wanted to run Cotton Guard, but I didn't really have uh, like a chance to like set it up hmm. any other of my games. Oh, okay. Did you actually run a Cotton Guard set at all, or? Uh, no, I, I ran an Electric Terrain uh, against an Amoongus, but it didn't work out. Oh. Hmm. Yeah. That's too bad. All right. So the question three is: um, If Mega Ampharos somehow ended up getting picked. What would you have gotten instead? Uh, probably Mega Sceptile, but I hate Mega Sceptile. Mega Ampharos was like my fourth backup pick. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> I would have probably ended up getting Mega Sceptile, but I wouldn't be happy about it. I yeah. wouldn't really be too happy about it to cut the fucking damn Discord. <laughs> <laughs> Today we've got two replays to look at. We've got Ojama's Week 3, uh, Alola Conference Battle. You can see here, it's versus Astro and He's got a... Really amazing team, actually, and you see the Mega Ampharos on Ojama's side right here. And unfortunately, he has the two immunities for the Mega Ampharos, so let's just see what it's going to do. All right, we're at turn 11, 
the crocodile comes in from Ojama's side against the uh, tornadoes from Aster. It gets it dies to the spikes in the stealth rocks. And after this, we're going to see the Mega Ampharos come in and threaten this tornado's T with its powerful stab moves. The Diggersby is in the back, so you can expect that switch. The U turn comes out. And what does the Mega Ampharos go for? Cobalion actually comes in. And the Thunderbolt just wrecks it. And after that, it puts in the Diggersby after all and just switches it back out to the Roselia. So we're looking at turn 19 right now. Ojama uh, only has two Pokemon left. The Scizor is asleep. The Tyrantar comes in and kills the Scizor. Uh, the Mega Ampharos comes in for the last time. Let's see if it can do anything here, if it has enough choice moves to get rid of all of that Hester's Mons. I don't think so. The Crunch just comes out and yeah, that's where Ampharos's low speed comes into play, where it just gets outsped by even a slow mod such as Tyranitar. We've got a second replay this time around. Ojama versus Survive, week 4 of the Alola Conference. Um, in week 2, and Mega Ampharos didn't show up, but this time it did. And I'm not sure if it can do that much work here. Obviously the Crobat and Stormy are weak to it, but it, they outspeed it with so much that I wonder what kind of set... Um, the Mega Ampharos is going to bring to do work in this matchup because it looks difficult. The Mega Ampharos actually comes in on the Starmie, um, eating this Ice Beam. It's not Mega Evolved yet, so it doesn't take as much damage. And he switches it back out, scared of like, I guess a Volt Switch or another type of move. And obviously, the Volt Switch comes out. That's a decent amount of damage to the High Dragon. That's resisted hit, so it would have done like more than 50 uh, off a of regular Volt Switch. It's crazy if it wasn't resisted. A little while later he actually uses U-Turn from Scizor to put it back in against the Crobat, so it's really there for the Starmie and the Crobat. Um, Roost comes out and he actually just uses Discharge and does so much damage on the neutral hit and gets it paralyzed. Discharge is like Scald but with Paras. So after the longest struggle in GOT history, the Tox effect goes down against the Crobat and immediately the Mega Ampharos comes out. Um, Crobat goes for the Air Slash here to try and flinch it out, but it's pretty clearly just a sack. Discharge comes out and just kills it right away. And Hiligo comes in and doesn't get killed by the Power Gen. But the Discharge comes out and it doesn't do that much to the Hiligo, unfortunately. And the Power Gem takes out the Mega Ampharos in this battle. That's about the end of it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode. Peace.